What you want to do is actually designing in India. Yeah, before making India, you want to have design in India. And again, have a look at our charging stations. Right. They're all designed in India, not only for the Indian market, but they go internationally. Mojo for Industry presents Power Talk, featuring Siemens Limited at Elekrama 2025. Hello and welcome to Mojo for Industry. We are at Elekrama 2025 in the most energetic vibe and booth at Elekrama 2025 is of the Siemens Limited. Siemens is posting their a range of smart, innovative, state-of-the-art, intelligent machines and solutions. I'll be joining with Mr. Robert Diman, who will give you an update about how smart infrastructure division of Siemens Limited is going to drive the infrastructure growth in India. So, I mean, you can see actually one of the key topics we are looking at is um, exactly doing what the team of Electrama is, is about basically facilitating uh, the energy transition. Yeah, and you will see a lot of topics around this over here. Uh, so we are looking at how you get more renewables integrated. If you have renewables coming in, you will see a lot of fluctuation in the renewables. That means you need digitalization solutions to help actually manage the complexity which is coming in. If you have digitalization and you need cybersecurity, so then we talk about cybersecurity for some of these uh, topics. And then, of course, the whole thing continues. We don't stop at the edge of the grid, but we actually look at some of our consumers. So typical consumers are buildings, infrastructure consumers, and those could be like data centers. Yeah, so we do a lot in that area. It could be industrial infrastructures, you know, Many people are talking about all these emerging industries happening in India, like semiconductors and battery storage. Yeah? And in that context, we're also doing quite a bit, helping them actually optimize their energy infrastructure. And then you got also new consumers coming to the game, like e-mobility. And this is also a topic where we've been getting a lot of attention here at this event. Yeah, And from that perspective, I think that sort of covers many of the topics we're doing it for our viewers who are not here no visiting the both uh, for the key exhibits you have you spoke about the application series so if, if you want to talk more about the exhibits about uh, uh, let's say the whole energy trans uh, transition part here so there's a lot about sustainability uh, so what we have over here is our blue gis which actually helps take out um, sf6 gases out of the gis which we're exhibiting over here and our blue GIS basically uses clean air. So the same air you and I breathe, uh, uh, processed on an industrial manner is used instead of SF6, and this has a huge impact. Uh, one topic which has also been getting a lot of attention is our uh, electronic circuit protection device, uh, which we've got exhibited just behind me in the corner. Something our uh, global CEO spoke about, Matthias Rebellius at the inauguration speak. And what makes that absolutely remarkable is it's actually a mini computer in the form of a MCCB. And uh, what that does is it combines 10 different devices into one. And it does it in such a way that you can save space. So this is helping optimize some of the resources. You need less plastics to do it. It, it needs, you need less metal to do it. So from that perspective, it becomes more resource efficient. And in addition to that, it consumes also less electricity. So it is much more energy efficient from this perspective. Uh, one topic is our FSI device, which actually helps utilities um, reduce the time they need to identify uh, failures in their distribution lines. And you, say, you know, especially in those rural areas where you got lots of hills and mountains in between and forests when it takes three to four hours to sometimes identify these faults, yeah? It can be reduced to minutes, just by adding these devices and it can be a communicable device which sends a signal directly online to some kind of uh, 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 control center or even without that uh, by sending a light signal it can reduce time dramatically. I should not forget 100% engine designed uh, uh, chargers yeah so the R&D is in India the manufacturing is in India even the value creation about 75% of the whole value creation is done in India I think that applies for many of the stuff we have over here, uh, which is making sure that we actually create value, not only for Indian customers actually going forward, but taking some of these solutions to 
let's say neighboring geographies who are very keen to leverage this technology as well. So uh, when you talk about the infrastructure growth in India, no, uh, for the past uh, a decade and a half, uh, it has so no exponential growth, uh, whether it's in uh, metro rail, whether it's airports, whether it's uh, no water related infrastructure, yeah. road development, everywhere. And how Siemens infrastructure is placed to you know, the, make the most of it? Uh, typically, we classify, try to classify infrastructure into three segments. So, one is grid infrastructure. So we look at urban infrastructure. Urban infrastructure, all those topics we just now spoke about in transportation sector. So you've got airports, ports, um, and this is one part. And then you've got, of course, the industrial infrastructure, which comes in. And we play in all of these areas a role in context of first making sure. You see, no infrastructure actually works without electricity. So we make sure that the electricity which comes in is as clean as possible, it gets distributed as efficiently as possible. And then where there where it gets consumed, that we do everything to optimize the consumption because the saving you can have by not consuming more than you need also contributes to, let's say, reducing uh, the need to generate more electricity, maybe in not such a sustainable way. So in all these places, we provide technology the underlying primary technology, but we also put the automation communication layer on top. And then finally, uh, like you can see on this nice X, basically we try to collect all the information from all these various sources to put it together in one place so that the customers can actually run analytics on top of it and then, you know, find ways to optimize it uh, so they can extend the life cycle of the infrastructure, uh, reduce the downtime if repairs need to be done, and also, to some extent, using artificial intelligence, etc., also be able to predict where a uh, uh, fault is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But recently, I uh, no, visited your G of Tara. Something I'm very proud of. Thank you for saving the time for that. And I could see that from a particular office, you were you know, keeping a track or monitoring the assets from across the world. Yes. How it's going to facilitate Siemens in the years to come when the data is going to play a bigger role? So actually, Based on G-Avatar, we have developed actually a standardized application which we are now taking out to other customers. Right. We call it uh, Building X Portfolio Manager, which was something we had originally only set up for our own use. Yeah? And then we saw so much value in it. Our own real estate company has been able to leverage it so nicely. It must be also beneficial for others. And that's why we said, OK, let's, let's take it out and share it with other customers. And we got First, international pilot customer. So something which was developed in India has started going globally and actually the first international customers, are non-Siemens customers are coming in from Europe. So the whole point is to make it customizable and to allow customers to add on as they need it. So there's no need to buy a big complex solution. It's exactly to allow the customer to scale as he needs. Yeah, And it's also helped us move towards our own sustainability targets, which Siemens has globally communicated and becoming carbon neutral. Uh, it basically, it's an underlying technology which have, helps us monitor and make sure that we act and move in that direction. Would you like to highlight uh, you know, what exactly the roadmap is going to be for Siemens Mars, the smart infrastructure business in India in the five years down the line? What our global vision is, is we always talk about uh, getting the real and the digital world together. Uh, and we want to do that in a continuous loop. Yeah, uh, You know, since everyone is looking at efficiency, uh, looking at productivity, everyone wants smart, uh, infrastructure to be set up fast. You look at India, uh, basically people want it yesterday. There are lots of constraints. May there be time or financial constraints. And even if it's existing infrastructure, people want it up the whole time. They don't have time to get it repaired, correct? So by having this loop of simulating things in the digital world, before you actually do it in the physical world, uh, we believe you can achieve all these topics. And let's say our vision is to do this for all our customers, specifically around the critical and premium infrastructure in all aspects, be it the grids, so the energy infrastructure, as I spoke about it, or grid infrastructure, be it industrial infrastructure in those critical spaces, or be it what we call urban infrastructure for data centers, etc. Uh, before I uh, conclude, Robert, uh, would you like to share any message to the stakeholders, the partners, the clients, other no solutions providers to you? So Siemens Smart Infrastructure has been connected 
with the infrastructure in India right from our very beginning. So since more than 150 years, we are active in India. Uh, you know, when it came to actually building the telegraphic line. And today we have a huge network of R&D facilities, manufacturing facilities, partners, service facilities, and everyone is working together to actually uh, maintain, build and improve the existing infrastructure. Some of the cases we have personally not anticipated the impact it actually has on people's lives. And I think uh, uh, we want to say that this is something which actually motivates us to continuously innovate and find ways so that we can help our customers on their journey going forward. Yeah, This is one thing we want to push for and strive for. And of course, I mean, I said 150 years, let it be another 150 years at any, least. Any commitment to the Indian market? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, Matthias Rebellius actually in his inaugural speech, he spoke about the kind of commitments we are giving. Um, uh, uh, there's been a lot of investments happening in India. Actually, in all our facilities, we are investing in increasing R&D capabilities and manufacturing capabilities. So from this perspective, uh, there's a ramp up happening everywhere. And again, I think many people always look at commitment to the Indian market as manufacturing in India. I feel manufacturing in India is the last step. What you want to do is actually designing in India. Yeah, Before make in India, you want to have design in India. And again, have a look at our charging stations. They're all designed in India, not only for the Indian market, but they go internationally. And I can show you a number of products that are both which are designed in India, not only for the Indian market, but for our customers international. Thank you so much, Robert. Uh, we use Siemens Smart Infrastructure adds more smartness to Indian infrastructure.